Well, hey, everyone. Welcome to Equipped with a Crown. And I'm here with Christy Joy. This is Kat. And um, we have such a special <laughs> honor today to have Heidi Baker with us. We have just dreamt of this moment and have just waited to be able to sit with you and just soak in um, everything that you carry and who you are and the heart that you have. And we just want to honor you because, as Christy Joy was saying earlier, you are that example. You have set such a standard for so many, and it will carry on for generations. You have shown you are the embodiment of a laid down lover mm -hmm. who has given Jesus your full and complete yes, and you go where I'm sure places you don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> But you go, and you share his love everywhere you go, and you just, honestly, you set the bar and the standard so high, and I just thank you, and we honor you for yes. that, mm -hmm. and we're so honored that you're here. Thank you for saying yes to us and Thanks, coming to Kat. have a conversation. I'm just us. a little mama, just a little <laughs> laid down mama, but I sure am in love with Jesus, and mm -hmm. it's great to be here, and yeah. you're very kind. Yeah. Thanks. So good. Well, I have a little bit, for those of you who don't know Heidi Baker, <laughs> I just don't even know, you know, who would not know you, but for those who don't know, let me just say a little bit about uh, who you are. So Heidi and her husband, Roland, um, started Iris Global in 1980. And um, have you been in ministry since then? Uh, I actually started when I was 16, oh. so 1980 oh. was 20, but I was, I've was i been preaching since I was 16 That's on right. the streets. Wow. Yeah. That's right. So good. Okay, so Heidi was powerfully called to the mission field at the age of 16 yes. when she was living on an Indian reservation in Mississippi as an American field service student. Several months after she was uh, led to Jesus by a Navajo evangelist, Pentecostal, that yeah. way, right? He was, he, was, he was Baptist. Oh, he was? Yes, he was a Baptist. Oh, that's awesome. And I was wow. the only one who came to Jesus Whoa. that night. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Was for you. You All never know. American wow. Indians and me, and I was the only one that came forward. He thought he had a bummer night, but it was okay. It, was, <laughs> it turned out really well. It kind well. of turned out okay <laughs> for this guy. That's good. Um, wow. As she was taken up in a vision for several hours and heard Jesus speak audibly to her and tell her to be a minister and a missionary to Asia, England, and Africa. When she returned home to Laguna Beach, California, she began ministering at every opportunity and leading short-term mission teams. After Heidi and Roland were married, they longed to get to Africa to fulfill their calling. Once they were in Mozambique, they were given an orphanage that that no one could want or support. What nobody <laughs> wanted it. This wow. jump started the fulfillment of the call on their lives and began a major move of God in Mozambique. Mm -hmm. And we were we first went to Indonesia, and Hong Kong. We were there in Asia, actually, touring, ministering with dance drama. We were there about twelve years and working among the poorest people we could find, living in the slums. And mm -hmm. so we were there 12 years in Asia, then three years in the UK, wow. doing the um, where I did my PhD, and then Mozambique. So oh, it's been a long journey. Oh, wow. It's been 43 years now. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. It's so good. Okay, so tell us how did you and Roland meet? Oh, yeah. Roland was, he's 12 years older. So okay. when I was in preschool, he was in university. So people say, <laughs> nice. did you meet at university? No, that would have been strange. But um, he was teaching a Bible school in Dana Point, mm -hmm. and I was engaged to, to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And the Lord wow. told me one day, at um, SEC Vanguard University, Assemblies of God University, he said, um, you, you can't marry this man. Take off the engagement ring. And I remember I was just devastated. I was sobbing. And I loved this man so much. And really, it was six weeks before the wedding. But I heard the Lord say, no, you can't marry him. So I took off the, the ring. And then um, we were going on a church ski trip. We love to ski, okay. so we were going on a ch church 
ski trip, and I sat next to Roland, and my fiance, ex fiance, was driving the van. So that was a little awkward there. <laughs> yeah. But um, we just talked for hours and hours and hours about. I said, I'm called to Africa, Asia, and England. He said, Well, I'm born in China. That's great. I, that makes sense to me. And he was the only person wow. that didn't. You know, think that was a strange thing that I heard. And he said, that's awesome. And then we, um, I was in Mexico City, went to jail, lost my visa, piece of paper. <laughs> when I got out of jail, yes, no joke, this is a wild story. Oh, wow. I get out of jail, but the Lord had There's told me seven there. things in, in the slums of Mexico City. And right in the middle, he said, you're going to marry Roland Baker. And I said, what? 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 Like... I mean, no, we were not dating. We were not, ta I mean, I talked to him one time on a bus. And and that was it. And I said, okay, Lord, if that's your will. So I get out of jail, and Roland had written seven very mushy letters to me. And oh. they got to me the day where the rest of the team was gone. But because I didn't have my visa and been in jail, I couldn't leave. And somehow these letters got to me, really love letters, actually. And then I met him. He came and picked me up at the airport. We went to lunch once and got married. Oh and we left for gosh. Indonesia on a $30, oh, wow. uh, one-way ticket in $30 in 1980. No, what? Yeah. Wow. yeah. You know, one thing I love about that story, I love all of it, but I love that God like snuck that in the middle. It was like yeah. a sandwich. It He's wasn't like, the first Here's thing. all this spiritual stuff. And then, hey, by the way, you're going to marry this man you just met. Yeah. And that was, that was definitely the most spiritual, I think, yes. because he's my covenant partner yeah. and I don't think I could do it with anyone mm -hmm. any, oh, anyone but him. So he's, he's a real gift from, from Jesus wow. to me. Yeah. Wow. That's and so you have nice. how many kids? 17. 17 Woo. children. Um, two blonde, blue-eyed blondes, <laughs> and 15 Africans. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. That you actually adopted. We foster adopted. Foster we don't adopted. have all the paperwork, but believe oh me, gosh. they're um, your they're ours. <laughs> we are able to build them all a block house. Mm. Um, they're our family. Oh. And right now our son, Elisha, natural born, and um, 10 of our kids are all together in Mozambique celebrating our second oldest son's graduation oh. from his master's degree right oh, now. Yay. So, yay, yes. go Sergio! Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we have a big family. So good. Yeah, All right, so well, we have a much. super spiritual question. To okay, ask you, Kat, yeah, you want to start it? It's pretty deep. Yeah. So, we just want to okay. get you ready to ask it. about so, this. You have started this like viral spiritual phenomenon that's like catching. I didn't know that it's yeah the thing that I hear <laughs> almost every day yeah when okay. I'm here at Bridgeway I hear it literally almost every day yeah. okay so we want to find out it? where it originated Shaba Shaba <laughs> Shakababa yeah that that's Shaka that's a tongues I heard it means <laughs> I heard when somebody, I asked somebody about it, does anyone know what this means? Because yeah. when you're in the spirit, it's it means something like covenant. Oh. It means like uh, like I, I promise. Wow. Oh, I, I love promise. that. People were, um, were looking it up and, and uh, what it might <laughs> wow. mean. And they said it means covenant and something about I promise. But wow. a very strong I promise. Mm -hmm. Come yeah. on. Yeah, Whoa. so it just came from, it's a part of a prayer language. Yeah, I love it. But we do promise that we, we will do. give him everything. Yes. Do whatever he wants. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, we've been talking um, this week with uh, with Lit Papa Leif and Paul Yadow all about the family culture. Mm -hmm. We want to know, what is family like in Mozambique? What is that culture of family like there? Yeah. Boy, we have gone through so many um, changes yeah. through the years. Because mm -hmm. when we first got, um, we've been in Mozambique almost 29 years. Okay. Now we're going on 29. Um, it was just chaos. Like, it is chaos now in the north. But yeah. in the south, there were just piles of dying children. Mm -hmm. And so I just picked them up. I just said, do you want to come live with me? And there was no social welfare. And I just, I just said, do you want to come live with me? Do you want to come... <sighs> stay with us and it just started growing 
And so at one time we ended up with like four kids in one bed. They they were living, dying, starving on the street, yeah. being um, abused. You know, the police would abuse them. Other people would abuse them. Um, girls that had just been tossed out in the garbage dump and, and abused so many times. And I was just like, we have to take them. And we didn't, even today, we're faith-based ministry. Yeah. So even today, it's like, I don't know how this month's going to, how it's going to happen. You know, I'm being really honest. Yeah. This is how we live, like on the edge. And I'm like, I don't know how we're going to do it. Yeah. But I know God's faithful. We just took them all in. And then really, as we went to the revival in Toronto, mm -hmm. God crushed in on me, especially on me. Roland first. Roland went first. But on me, he crushed in and really got a revelation of Abba, of Daddy God. And he's saying, I don't want orphanages, mm -hmm. he said to me. He wants us to care for orphans, but they're called to be adopted. Yes. You know, they're all of us yeah. are are called to be adopted by Daddy God, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so it, he started shifting my heart of how we do it. Now, I still know he's not mad at us for doing what we did because right. people were, they were going to die. Yeah. So he just took them. But as we grew in the Lord, it's like, there is a better way. There is a better way. There is a better way. And we can put these children into homes. Mm -hmm. And so it, I'm very excited. It's been a long, long journey because we took so many kids home. Like I'd fill up my truck over and over. Yeah. And now you can't do that. You can't just pick up kids and fill up your truck. <laughs> and home. They have social welfare. But back then they right. didn't have oh, any wow. documents. Like I'd go in the okay. garbage heaps. Yeah. I was in the garbage dump for eight years. One of the girls wow. that's doing the party for Sergio, our, our little girl, um, I, I don't want to say all the names, but sure. she was dying, curled up in a ball, dying. Wow. And she was just saying, machi, 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 water, water, water. Uh -huh. Now she's getting her master's in counseling. Wow. She has, um, helps with all the internally displaced people in the war where we work in the war zone. She is just carrying the glory of God. Anyway, so we took in our group of kids and um, they started living with us, and then we started building houses. Because some of them we got when they were 12. You know, when they get bigger, it's more important even than when they're little, yeah. that you really are yes. mom and dad. And so we started shifting things. And just um, two months ago, we were able to move the last group of girls out of our children's center into their own house. Oh. and. So it's home, home, home. It's not an orphanage. It's not a place where other kids will say a stigma, you live in an orphanage. Or, you know, we never called them orphanage, right. but you live in a children's home. No, 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 no. Now it's like home, home. And most of our bases have transitioned. A few of them, they were able to make the dorms into a house and put like a living room in there and a oh, kitchen. Yeah. And so this this becoming a child, becoming um, a, a, a daughter of the father Gosh. or a, a son of the father, it shifted everything. The kids, the difference between the children who are raised in the children's village and a lot of them still need help, you know, but the children that are being raised in the home, you know, they, even when they're bigger, they can come there for their birthdays. They come there for celebrations. They come there for Christmas. Like that's their home. Yeah, wow. And it's a family. Mm -hmm. And God does not want our churches to be orphanages. Right. He wants our churches to yes. be a homes for the loving Amen. believers. Yes. Why small groups are so important. Right. Like we, I love big. I love, I love preaching in stadiums sure. and all that. But he wants mm -hmm. us to be yeah. family, that we know each other, that we we can trust each other. Yeah. Yes, sometimes we're a dysfunctional family. You know, it, there's always some dysfunction in every family. But it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we have shifted in our entire ministry now working in 38 nations. Um, wow. We have really, really shifted into family. And all our day programs, they're called, um, almost all of them called Agape. And they're all about teaching the children their identity. Yes. And yes, we feed them. Yes, we we educate them. But it's about them knowing who they are mm -hmm. in yeah. Christ. Yeah. And they're just the leaders. They're becoming the leaders of everything. I, oh, I'm just so in love. I love family. Yeah. It's love so good. It. Kat and I so, lead a small group together. Yeah. Oh, and good. we love that. And it's yeah, amazing. it's super important. Go ahead. 
So I'm wondering with these homes, do you have one set of parents there? Are there multiple sets? Like, how does that work? Um, yeah. Usually two aunties. Oh, okay. Two oh. aunties. Or okay. or an uncle. Okay. If it's a boy's house, it could be okay, two sure. uncles. Um, we tried to get married couples, but it just didn't work. You have okay. to do what you do with what works. Absolutely. And so um, they, they, they are just, they're the they're the aunties okay. or they're the uncles and they the kids call them auntie or uncle some of them call them mama but that's their choice mm -hmm. mama or papa right. that's their choice we let them feel that when they that's feel so like good. they they feel like that's the case then they they'll yeah. switch it yeah it's beautiful it's that's absolutely amazing. beautiful. That's so wow. good. Yeah. I was watching um, a documentary last night, watching you actually going to the dumps. This is an older documentary. Yeah. You were going into the we're dumps. We're still going like, in, I'll tell you. I love yeah. it. It's I was in the just north. like, yeah. these kids, though, have to, have to feel that trauma mm. of being, like, pushed out of their homes. Yeah. You know, because the families can't afford them or whatever, and so they're just pushed out. So they're just doing whatever they can to survive. You have been in these situations so many times of going in and, and rescue. How do you know who all you can take? How do you pick well, and choose that? What is you know, the process? We're, well, we're empowered by the love of God. This is our yeah. mission statement. We're mm -hmm. empowered by the love of God to stop for the one in need. Yes. So as we go in, whether it's on the streets or now, now, We've shifted to day programs because okay. our heart is really to mm -hmm. to see the whole family healed, even if it's completely dysfunctional. Yeah. Like, okay, well, we can come in then to that family with these children getting healed. Then they become like the catalyst for yeah. the family to get healed. Yeah. Wow. So even that process that we did is becoming family. Mm -hmm. So we'll, instead of just bringing them home, We'll find out. We have a, a very large team. We have a 1,000 sure. on our paid staff in Mozambique. Yeah. So there are a lot of people, and they're all Mozambicans. And then we have a, a few missionaries who are heroes for sure. Um, but, but yeah, very big team. And they go all over. It could be the streets, the the slums, the the IDP camps, and we just we just start these day programs where the love of God crashes in on these kids. They get to play again. You know, they, yeah. can you imagine El Shabaab burns your house down? Mm. El Shabaab, like, beheads family members. And then these kids are just like, they just run. And they some of them can't find their parents. And they, they're in these camps in, in northern Mozambique. This is only in my province, the north. What we do is go in there with arts, arts and crafts. Um, we go in there, our teams, and I get to do it when I'm home, and I love it so much. We go in there with soccer. We go in there with music. We go in there with food, with joy, with audio solar Bibles, and we just stop for the one and then another one and another one and another one, and we just pour out the love of Jesus, the team, and it's all about team. Yeah. And that's why like, I love this um, prayer shawl because when you knitted this, and it's just so amazing. Because when I see it, it looks like a net. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it look yes. like a net? Like a net. And the Lord's been telling us, you know, it. we're no longer called to fish with a pole. Mm -hmm. Like, it's mm -hmm. not about just going out there and fishing with a pole and bringing home that one child. But it's it's all of us together. It's why we go out in teams, sometimes 30, sometimes 50. And it's a net now. And when we pull, we pull in. And it's so... We're all, each one of us is stopping for the one. Yeah. Like, if you see me out at, at home, I'm going home on Sunday. Yay, Yay. I'm so excited. Yay. Um, <laughs> I will spend, at times, I'll spend an hour, hour and a half with one person yeah. just sitting in the dirt. But then there's 30, 40, 50 of us doing the, same, the same thing. thing. Mm -hmm. And so instead of it just being what I'm doing and bringing one to the Lord, mm -hmm. now it becomes this beautiful net. Wow. And it is a prayer net, and we are seeing this net in the river. And people are running to Jesus. Oh, Everything wow. is changed. And we just pull it in, <laughs> and we, like, sing in the harvest. And we sing in the most hellish places on earth. Mm -hmm. We go, and we just start singing. Mm -hmm. And um, when Mozambicans bring in the harvest, they, they sing. 
when they pull in the nets, they're always singing. So we're singing these songs full of the glory of God, and we pull in the harvest. And so we are empowered by the love of God to stop for the one in need. And, it, and it's through however he shows us. But first it's through worship and adoration. That's how we stop. We stop for him. We're in the prayer house, just on our faces. We could be in there three, four hours. And then it's like Holy Spirit taps us, time to go. Then we go out to the camps. Then we go out to the poorest people on the planet. And it's only by miracles that we have resources to do it. And, and it's always on the edge. But it's like we know we're meant to feed the most hungry people mm. on the on the earth like yeah. this is what we're called to do and some people say no that's just social work i say no that's just jesus that's yes. what he does like yeah. he sees their pain their hell their that's why we have teams going into ukraine we we are um we were in we we're in israel when the war started yes. yeah. and we're just i just can't wait to get back you know, I, I got to get back there and just comfort the people. Mm-hmm. And then I was in Jordan and Egypt, and it's like, how do we comfort the Arabs and comfort the Jews and just be the love of Jesus? Mm-hmm. It's a net. Uh, so as a movement, we're just like holding this net and then calling other movements. Come on, come on, on come on. It. Join us in carrying the net and bringing in the harvest. We're compelled by the love of God. We're empowered by the love of God to stop for the one in need through worship, through outreach, through family, through education, through relief, development, healing, and the arts. And so we're just we're just going out there like, wow, yes, there's hurting, yes. dying people in Hollywood. Let's grab the net. We just did an acting school um, with Iris. And uh, they were just like pulling in these broken young actors, and they're just getting blasted by Holy Spirit. And they're shining in Hollywood. I'm telling you, um, the net is very, very big. And it's all about family. And we need families and families and families and families. But we also need to know we have tribes. Mm -hmm. Like when I come to this church, when I come here, I feel like, oh, it's my tribe, you know? I feel that with with Leif and and Paul and Paul Yadow. Like they're just... They're just family to yeah. me, you know, and I feel that um, just being in the building here. It's like, oh, yes, we're going to get to go in. Yes. Woohoo! Yeah. So it's, yeah, family's the most beautiful thing. And we just had Teresa Deadman here oh, last yay. month. And She's I connected. A, I just felt we doll. fell in love with each other. She was like, Christy Joy, you're, you know, you're oh. with me. You're, And she did this huge painting. It's in my office. It's oh. so beautiful. But the, the book that she wrote about you, oh, the little gosh, children's oh. Book. She illustrated. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's Heidi a doll. Loves, loves kids or something. Whatever. It was so beautiful. Yes. I was like, oh, just the heart. That is. Yes. It, there is this. We're each created for something so unique mm-hmm. in the Father, right? But He multiplies. I think it's what's so fun. And one thing that I loved uh, that she did was she she would push people to actually try something. People wow. who had never painted in the their whole lives. In front of anyone, she's like, "Okay, you're going to be a painter tonight," you know. Wow! And they create something so beautiful that actually touches the heart of people in the room, and they're getting healed. And we're like, "What?" Yeah. When we just that's awesome. G- I feel like Jesus is this. He just he loves to. He's a multiplier, number one, right? Yep. I mean, he constantly is there. Multiplying. It is multiplication. Multiplication, yes. 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 And to see, um, you know, and just to see us all becoming. When we know who we are, when we're stepping into the fullness, because we're believing, he's breaking off all these lies that we believed for so long. We're not enough because, you know, I had a mother who shamed me for so many years. She left when I was 12. I was married, remarried, you know, I married um, a a man that became a pastor. He abandoned our daughters and I for another woman. It was just rejection after rejection. And then our church said, you're a square peg trying to fit into a round hole. You no longer fit here. And just to feel, none of that felt like God to me because I knew enough about him. Yeah. Because I had been in his word, you know, but I didn't know fully who I was Mm -hmm. until all of that went down. When the last thing kind of happened, I really got as close as I could to Jesus. 
And he said, quit your job, sell everything you have. I'm taking you to Denver, Colorado, where I'm wow. making all things new for you. Come on. And eventually hit Bridgeway, where literally we're fathered and mothered, you know, and here we were kind of orphaned, you know, in these yeah. orphan mindsets. Of yeah, the, you were. I can only, you know, do this one thing, but literally I became more and more, and the my voice had been shut down in worship in places, and now God is releasing that again. And then, you know, it, there's just this like, whoa, God, I can't wait to share you. I want others to do the same thing. God, use my voice to, yes. sh- to encourage others to do the same thing, yeah. you know, because some may want to go out on the mission field. There might be some actors out there. There might be whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Just be your creative self that God yes. has created you to be. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. And every one of our our kids are different and unique and beautiful. And that's mm. that gives me a picture of just his kingdom too. Yes. And how every daughter, every son is called to shine. Yeah. You know, there's not God has no lesser sons. Right. God has no lesser daughters. Right. It's just finding your purpose and your destiny. And when you do then you have joy. I tell you, you have joy. Yes. Now when I travel, I I feel joy of the Lord. Like mm-hmm. I know I'm meant to be here at Bridgeway right now yeah. as much as I am t- to be at home next week. Yeah. Like I know that I'm on assignment. Yeah. And if I'm on assignment, then the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes. Even if my body may be a little oh, tired or yeah. whatever, he's, His joy mm-hmm. and knowing you're in the right place yeah. at the right time for the right reason, that's huge. Um, and, and that everybody listening out there, and, and you told your story, like knows that they're loved and cherished. Yes. And God's not, He doesn't want to just like beat you up and say, oh, you have to change everything. You know, if you're a believer and you're in love with Jesus, you're covered in the blood, then He's He's like, He wants for you to discover the destiny that He placed in you, the destiny He put in you. He put a destiny in every one of His children. In Ephesians, it says we are, we've been adopted. Yes. And when we're adopted, it means we're heirs. That's wild, guys. Yeah. Like, we're heirs and co-heirs. What does so that crazy. look like? Like, okay, then that means anything um, that is needed, He will provide. And and I just believe it. Sometimes my yes. team's like, you're crazy. You know, you just, <laughs> we've, we're doing too much. And um, I'm like, I know it feels that way, but I just know God's, good and he's such a good father and I hear people's visions of what they want to do because God showed it to them and then I'm very excited about it and I want to say oh let's you know let that's how the acting school started some of these kids they're like we don't want to go to India or Mozambique or or Somalia or we want to go to Hollywood like God I watched it happen we're in Mozambique in our harvest school and the power of God just whack hit people and hey you couldn't even walk. I mean, we had to carry students to their rooms, Africans, internationals. Mm. There were so many different countries. And I remember this one girl just getting hit, vibrating with the power of God. She was just like shaking, crying. And she saw like the lost, broken bride of Christ in Hollywood. Mm. And she saw her just all completely destroyed and messed up. And and she heard the Lord say, I'm asking you to go get my lost bride in Hollywood. They did not have fear. Visas for America. They were from Australia. They did a a visa lottery thing. I never even heard of it. But you just put your name down and they roll balls in some thing and they pick out people's names. It's a it's a real thing. There's you don't pay for it. So they weren't gambling. They weren't gambling, but they just put in their names, their names in the balls, come up, and there it's their name comes out. Wow. So not only did God call them, but he provided he them a provided visa. The wow. I mean, crazy stuff. Yes. So we started an art school, Iris Art School in L.A. I love that because it's it's all over and it's all, why is it so different? People go, don't you guys have one one vision? We we really believe that we're all empowered by the love of God to mm-hmm. stop for the one in need. So whatever your gift is, whatever your call is, yeah. I mean, look at you. 
you totally right. blessed me with this, yes. you know, this prayer shawl, like because it means something to me that you prayed mm -hmm. for me while you yes. did it. I can't knit for the life of me. If I tried to <laughs> knit, either. it'd be terrible. It would be like, it would take me 10 years and I'd give up. And it would be a bizarre thing. They'd say, oh, please don't do it again. You know, but you have a gift and here yes. you are. And I love that oh. because I um, thank you. Yes. I just love that God, he picks his kids mm -hmm. and he gives them a name and a face. Yes. Even if their parents don't have a name and a face, he mm -hmm. he sees the face in the name, and and he loves his children and he wants to just empower each one of us, like the entrepreneurs yeah. out there. Yes. Wow, they get to they get to <laughs> give the gift givers. They get to give so that other people can go yeah. out and rescue kids on the dump or rescue mm -hmm. kids that are dying in IDP camps or or anywhere else in the world, like. Yeah. Those guys, they have another gift. They get to create companies yeah. where people will be empowered by the love of God yeah. to then them get up and start to do stuff yeah. for God. I love that. It's yeah. like the old way um, was really different. When, when I was born again and I was filled with the Spirit the next night in a Pentecostal church, um, there was only one thing you could do if you really loved God. And that, well, no, too. Um, you could be a pastor or you could be a missionary. Mm -hmm. And if you're a woman, that was basically missionary. it. You could be a missionary if you really loved God. <laughs> well, that worked out well for me because <laughs> I am called. But I would, yeah. I've heard this story so many times. I was a medical doctor, but I came to the altar and I just gave it up. And now I'm going to be a missionary. Another one will say, I was an engineer. and Or another one, I was a scientist. And I was this. And I was a, I was a professor. And they're all, but I just went and laid it down at the feet of Jesus. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But when you lay down your gift, when you lay down your talent, your anointing at the feet of Jesus, I, I like the crown on yes. the stone yes. because it's, it looks a lot about laying down. We're laying yeah. down that yes. crown yes. and we're putting yes. it on the dirt, like before yes. the yes. feet of Jesus. Yes. Then what he does is he, he, he anoints that person. And he doesn't necessarily say, don't be a professor, don't be a dancer. Yeah. I was a ballet dancer. I was a professional ballerina. And the, the first thing the church said is, that's a sin. You can't dance. So I laid it down. Mercifully, AG Bible School, um, they they gave it back. Like they, The Lord gave it back. But they said, yes, you can dance. There's dancing in the Bible as long yeah. as it's um, adoration. You know, so I'm like, I'm always adoring Jesus. Yes. But... What I'm saying is God wants to set um, people free, women who have lost yes. their voice. Yes. Um, maybe you've been hurt or things, everybody's been hurt, oh, quite frankly. Uh, if you really? tell me you've never been hurt, I'll oh. say, I'm not sure oh, about that. Definitely <laughs> been, uh, yes. I, I mean, I don't buy that at all. Right, exactly. But all of us have been hurt. Yeah. Um, but, but when God, our daddy, really, really, we know we're adopted, and we know we have an inheritance, yeah. then we get to shine. Yeah. And of course we're gonna lay the crown down. But if you wanna shine as an entrepreneur, or you wanna shine as a, as a ballerina, or a truck driver, <laughs> or an engineer, a scientist, a professor, like what a glorious thing. Yeah, right. Like right now, we're, we're about to open our fully accredited university. It's called mm -hmm. Iris University in Northern wow. Mozambique. 18 years of work. And we're on the final pushing, pushing for the final accreditation. So I want to say people that have master's degrees, yeah. PhDs, you want to donate a class, you want to just get on a Zoom and say you will teach one class. We will get it translated. You'll have, wow. a, you'll have someone in your classroom in yeah. Mozambique that will be able yeah. to help you um, communicate with the students. We are literally looking mm -hmm. um, for PhDs and master's degrees, people who are 
filled with Holy Spirit. Mm, yes. It may be in the area of math, in the area of science, in the area of, of education. It may be in the area of, of IT, of business, entrepreneurs. We're looking for you. Come on. I just put this wow. forward. Why? Because so many times people think, oh, I'm going to quit my job to get to the mission field. Well, this is a different way. Now with Zoom, look at it. Look wow. what we're doing right here in this room. It's right. so cool. So really, if you want to donate a class and you're like, I could teach an eight-week class once a week, I can I can get on Zoom and I can teach these Mozambicanos who never had a chance at an education before wow. this at this wow. level and pour in Jesus. and tell them my testimony, wow. why wow. I'm a scientist, a why feeling. I'm a doctor, why I'm an engineer, why I do what I do for the glory of God. It'll just, it'll rock Africa. So I just, I know that wasn't on your script. Oh, no, we're so oh, glad. glad. I'm just excited that. about yes. it. That's the net, yes. you see? Yes. You don't even have to leave where you live. You just set it up. It's not even expensive we anymore. It used know. to be crazy expensive. Now you can just set it up and use your iPhone and another oh, thing. Literally. You can literally teach in Northern Mozambique in a wow. war zone. Come on. <laughs> That's our God. Yeah, that's our God. He, I mean, let's do it. Created that opportunity. That's so amazing. I'm just floored. I just love. I love. I'm an idea girl. Oh, like I'm yay. all about like you know constantly thinking. You know, and I have my own small business doing wedding flowers, and I do weddings. Just have this huge heart for weddings. I'm like, I could jump on there and teach you could entrepreneur wedding. Like sure. how to start a wedding business. Oh my yes, you could. Like and how to design florals for weddings yes. or whatever it is. I don't know what weddings are like in Mozambique. Oh, no, they're all, all about it. The kids that grew up with us, they um, all want to do weddings. I'm talking in our children's center that are now in children's homes. Home, home. Their own home. Um, anyway, they all want to have the wedding and the flowers. And, yeah, it's exciting. Next week I have a wedding. The week after I have a wedding. The week after oh I have a wedding. Goodness. Three in three weeks. Yeah. Wow. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. So, and weddings are such a um, powerful <sighs> example of yeah, healing. Yes. Totally. When you can just, 1, you know, they're not just saying I'll just live with someone, but yeah. no, I'm going to do covenant. Yeah. I'm going to yes. connect. And to make it beautiful and memorable, that's a glorious thing. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, you could teach that. That would be love, awesome. I love that. Be it's so, so good. I love it. Thank you so much for being who you are. Like, it is so evident, just the multiplication of God on your life. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure that you weren't, you know, when you said yes to go to Mozambique or wherever it was, you know, just when you said yes to Jesus, you probably we were not thinking, I'm going to go start a university. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know, it was just like, <laughs> you were literally just going to the dump and grabbing kids out that yeah. needed identity. In spoken the streets. Into it and yep. needed Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, and, the, and, and all of the trauma. I mean, like, you were shot at. You've been, you've gone through all these Stoned, things. beaten. I yep. mean, like, all of it. And there has to be a place inside of Jesus. And what we know about you is you have that intimacy yeah. factor yes. with Jesus. He's my yeah. everything. Oh, my Ooh, goodness, sure right? And there must be a place <sighs> inside sure of him that we can it. get to. Yeah. Where traumas are yeah, not the Messiah. giving yes, us our Lord. identity anymore. Right? Sure. Where we're able to move past it and move into that place of joy. Absolutely. I, I feel the Holy Spirit on that. And yeah. I know church is about yeah, know, to start. Right? So let's just pray. <laughs> yes. Let's yes. just pray oh, on thank that. You, thank Lord. you, Holy Spirit. Shola la Messiah. Lord, I especially um, thank you right now for those who have felt um, orphaned uh, by the church. Mm -hmm. People listening, they felt like they didn't really belong, that it really didn't feel like family for them. Yeah. Lord, we ask first of all that um, for forgiveness, Lord, as leaders in congregations, God, we just step in uh, also as mamas mm -hmm. where children didn't feel um, like they could do anything well we just step in and ask that you would shift that in the yes, mighty Lord. name of yes, jesus. jesus holy spirit just everybody watching just close your eyes and yes. lift your hands Lord, holy jesus. spirit would you just hey oh, would you just oh. come and flow river yes. of god 
Would you flow, river of God? Would you touch the pain inside of them where they just didn't know their destiny and they just felt orphaned. They felt like nobody really loved them. And so even some who are hurting themselves and continuing to hurt themselves and even say bad things, evil things about themselves. We, we break that off in the name of yes. Jesus. We yes. thank you that absolutely every single uh, woman, every single man, every single child is created in the image of God. We ask God for, for that um, Kairos moment right now. Whoa! Where they would just get wrecked by you holy spirit yes. they would just feel so much a pull if, of the heart of the father and they would start dreaming again they would dream the dreams yes. of god yes. they would dream the dreams of god and 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 they wouldn't um worry about um how all the time but they would just make that first step yeah. Even like Peter started walking on yeah, the water, and yeah. you caught him, Lord. Yes, I Lord. thank you that you caught him. The point's yes. not that he sunk. The point no. is he got out of the boat, yes, and Lord. he was the only one that went and tried. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I ask thank for you. every single person watching. They would step into their identity, yes, and yes. the power thank and the love you. of the Father thank would you, completely Daddy. change everything. Yes. And they would know Jesus intimately. Yes. Sholanama. And they would be filled daily, daily. Filled with the power of Holy Spirit. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba. Ooh, he's just here with us. Wow, wow. Thank you, God. Messiah. Wow. Sheila Lama Sotoro Boshea. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah. Just soak that in. Nice. Just soak that in, all you listeners. He loves you so much, and He's created you to reflect His image on this earth, and He wants you to be face-to-face -face with Him. Yes. As you're face-to-face -face with Him, you begin to take on His characteristics and His love, His joy, and you begin to discover all the things that He has inside of you, and then you begin to just reflect, yes, reflect. Jesus. Wow. Thank yes. you, Jesus. So shine. Yes. Shine, daughters. Yes. Shine. Shine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. Well, Yay. Heidi, thank you oh, so yes. much. Oh, my goodness. What a blessing. Yeah. We thank you. Yeah. Yeah, ladies, we just bless you. Thank you for stopping by listening to us. And we just... Yeah, we just bless you with the love of Jesus. We just bless you with greater encounters with Him, and um, and uh, just yeah, keep t keep tuning in because God's doing some great things here on this podcast, and we're just really excited to share His love with you, um, and and be encouraged every day. So just listen again. We'll see you next time on Equipped with a Crown. We love you.